following allegations of sex with an underage girl, the leader and chairman for the Alliance Democratic Party, Mohamed Kamarim Bamansare, has denied all claims, which he described as an attempt to smear his character and silence him. He was summoned by the Criminal Investigations Department to answer to questions regarding the allegations. He spoke to AYV's Ransford Libby Metzika. The leader of the Alliance Democratic Party, Mohamed Kamarin Bamansari, has been named in the sexual scandal of a 15-year-old girl. In an attempt to clear his name of the allegations, Mohamed Kamarin Bamansari has turned himself up for investigations at the Criminal Investigations Department. In speaking to AYV in an interview, the ADP leader confirmed that his residence was barricaded by police and military officials, even though at that point he was not aware of this particular case. According to Kamarimba, he met the girl when she asked him to help her with her schooling. For the past couple of days, they've been into my house. They break in yesterday, and uh, I've told the Inspector General yesterday that I'm going to be here at 1 o'clock at the CID. I'm here right now at the CID at 1 o'clock. But uh, it's not true. Um, that's why I want to make the max very clear so people can hear me well. I have never, never in my life touched an underage girl in my life. Um, this is a ploy, um, a setup. Everybody knows. Everybody that truly knows me knows that. Um, according to the allegation, uh, I took this 15 year old to a hotel, Diamond Lodge Hotel in Connor. I've never been in that hotel, never slept in that hotel. I've never actually stayed in that hotel. So I think the, the police went there and checked records. They found out that I was not even, never been there. So I don't know where this allegation are coming from. I don't know if it's just a plot to silence me, you know, as the main, one of the main opposition mouthpiece in this country. Maybe it's a gear towards sil to silence me, but uh, I don't know. This is why I'm here now, to know why, why, why the allegation and at least give my, st uh, give my statement to what's going on. I really don't know, except like you said, I called the LEC in Connor and the LEC told me about um, the investigating a matter of um, sexual penetration that I slept with a 15-year-old girl. And um, I will never do that, especially somebody like me. And my car, I've been in this country for so long. Um, there's no way. This is a total ploy to smear and destroy and silence me. And my attorneys are here right now. They um, even told me to work with me to the CID. So I believe they're here right now. I am Emmanuel Safa, um, Abulai, and, uh, and uh, the Macaulay, and um, some other attorney that are here to represent me. Runs for Lubi Metzger. All right, guys. So listen, before I even go any further to make any analysis, I'm going to read the Constitution to you guys, right? I'm going to go to Section 17 of the Constitution, the 1991 Constitution. Section 17 says protection from arbitrary arrest or detention. Now, I'm going to read Subsection 1 because Section 17 has three parts to it. It has Section 1, it has Section 2, and 3. So under section 17, subsection 1, it says, No person shall be deprived of his personal liberty except as may be authorized by law in any of the following cases. That is to say, and I'm going to, you know, bring what's, what I'm, what's very important for us to see here, which is subsection E and F. Again, follow me here. No person shall be deprived of his personal liberty except as may be authorized by law in any of the following cases. That is to say, I'm going to go to E. For the purpose of bringing him before a court or tribunal, as the case may be in exception, in execution of the order of a court. F. Upon reasonable suspicion of his having committed or is being about to commit a criminal offense. So again, it says, no person shall be deprived of his personal liberty except in these circumstances, E and F. And I'm reading E and F because... It relates to section subsection 3 of section 17. So subsection 3 of section 17, which says, Any person who is arrested or detained in such a case, as is mentioned in paragraph E or F that I just read, of subsection 1, and who is not released shall be brought before a court of law within 10 days. So any person who is, not, who is arrested or detained in such a case, as is mentioned in section in paragraph E and F that I read earlier, right? And who is not released shall be brought before a court of law. What does it say? It says within 10 days 
from the date of arrest in cases of capital offenses. So anybody that is arrested, they should be brought to court within 10 days in the cases of capital offenses, offenses carrying life imprisonment, and economic and environmental offenses. So anybody will commit these kinds of crimes, guys, anybody will commit any kind of crime there, we get for do with, say, capital offenses, you kill, murder, this and that, right? Rape, offenses carrying life imprisonment, should be brought before court in 10 days. And also, B, it says, within 72 hours of his arrest in case of other offenses. So again, either they bring the person within 10 days for coming to court, we commit these kinds of capital offenses and stuff, or within 72 hours, depending on the kind of crime. If they're in low, you know, they have to catch somebody, go to Pepe. Within three days, they for bring and come to court. This is what the Constitution says, right? And let me continue to read subsection B of three, right? Follow me, guys. If you have the Constitution, turn to it. So again, subsection three under section 17, B. And if any person, so it continues, say, within 72 hours of his arrest in case of other offenses, and if any person arrested or detained in such a case as is mentioned in the said paragraph F and is not tied within the periods specified in paragraph A or B, which you read the constitution of this section as the case may be, then without prejudice to any further proceedings which may be brought against him, he shall be released either unconditionally or upon reasonable conditions, including in particular such conditions as are reasonably necessary to ensure that he appears at a later date for trial or proceedings preliminary to trial. So this is where Mohamed Kamarimba comes in, in the video that you guys have watched. Because Mohamed Kamarimba was granted bail. Everybody knew it was granted bail. But what happened? His bail was seized. Why was his bail seized? Because they said he's a flight threat. But you've watched this video. If Mohamed Kamarimba wanted to run away from the country, he would have run away. But the man says he's innocent. So therefore, this ploy against Mohamed Kamarimba, and I'm doing this in English because for the international community, and I want to show you guys how democracy, how the institutions that should be protecting the individual human rights of every citizen in that country has failed us. That is what I want to point out to you guys. And I want you guys to see that. And again, whose responsibility is it to protect every citizen? It is the members of parliament. They should not gang up against certain individuals. Because we all know that Mohamed Kamarimba is a very controversial figure. If he was free and out today, he'll be speaking up against this government. So whose responsibility it is to protect Mohamed Kamarimba and protect myself and protect you that is watching this video? It is the parliament. The APC, the C4C, the NGC, they have the responsibility to protect Mohamed Kamarimba. They have the responsibility to protect everybody, not because they want to do it, but because the constitution says so. Mohamed Kamarimba should have been tried and then sentenced to jail. But he's in jail, rotting in jail, without sentence. He's being held against his will at this particular point in time, and his constitutional rights are being violated. Why? Because the opposition thinks they are comfortable with him being in there. They say, oh, it was against our party. It was against the APC. It was against the C4C. It was against the NGC. It was against SLPP. So let's lock him up because he's very vociferous. This is a man who was spoken against from against the president, President B.O. We he talked about his wedding. Look at this last week where the president of Ghana just signed a contract with Toyota. Then they can begin make Toyota assemble in Ghana. Volkswagen, then they go assemble in Ghana. President B.O., what's he in launch? Now, public kissing that same weekly. I see just the only woman they kiss her for married. You know, it hurts me. So this is why this man, the state, organized against him because he's the leader of the ADP as a political party to violate his constitutional rights. I'm going to leave this video because I don't want it to be too long. But I want the international community to pay attention to this. This is a continuous bastardization of the constitution. It's a violation of the human rights of Mohamed Kamarimba Mansari. It should be tried, it should be prosecuted and sentenced to jail, found guilty with the evidences to support the claim that he raped, that he was involved in a rape. We have no problem with this man being tried, said he's involved in a rape case. But the fact of the matter is, all we should agree on is, processes and procedures should be adhered to. The constitution should be adhered to. We should not violate the constitutional rights of any citizen just because we feel like we can come against these citizens, you know, to ensure that we violate their, their basic rights because they opposed us or because they don't belong to our political party. So Mohamed Kamariba has been failed by the state and has been failed by Sierra Leoneans. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves as a nation. That is what is happening to this man. Bye-bye, everybody.